A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 104. The second gas-fired steam test. Changing the position of the gas burner to make it more efficient and finding out why the live steam injector doesn't work by a simple process of elimination. With the gas burner in the position it was in the last episode, everything around the cab got extremely hot. The position of the burner was far too low, so I'm going to try and raise it up so the head of the burner is almost in the firebox. As I have two of these gas burners, I will modify one of them. I want to save the other one in case we get another power cut so I can cook my breakfast. All I'm going to do is bend over the three top parts like this. Unfortunately though, it was still too low. The solution was to use yet another piece of old scrap plywood to block it up a bit more to get it closer to the firebox. Now it's in a much better position. I just need to secure it somehow to the piece of wood to stop it moving around. I used a large wood screw with a cup washer. Crude and simple, but it works. This is a view from the cab with the fire hall door open, and when I close the door, I can actually touch it. Before, it was far too hot. Here's the gas tank arrangement. Notice that one of the gas tanks is in a plastic tub. I'll put some water in here, which stops it chilling and keeps the pressure up. Before continuing, I turned off the gas supply to kill the burner, because I need to check the check valve at the right-hand side. I think it's blocked. To see whether it was blocked, I used a bent piece of wire as shown here, and when I poked it up inside the check valve, the ball was really stuck to the seat, and was reluctant to move. Eventually it did, and some water came out of the boiler, but I think I have a problem with this check valve. But for the moment, it is free, so I will try the engine in steam, and see what happens when I open the injector valve. Here's a shot of me using the pair of pliers with the bent piece of wire. And as you can see, it took a while to unstick the ball from the seat. Ball sticking inside check valves is fairly common, and what you normally do is tap the top of the check valve with a spanner, but I can't really get to it here. The reason that I knew the check valve ball was stuck was I removed the injector and connected an air line to the inlet to the boiler, and even at 80 pounds per square inch of air pressure, the ball didn't move. But now as the ball is free, everything should be okay. Famous last words. I refitted the original injector, it seems logical to try this first, because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. As you can hear by the background noise, I opened the gas valve and relit the burner, and here I'm overfilling the bunker tank. This is not a big problem, it just tells me when the tank is full. And here I'm filling the side tanks. This takes longer than you think, because you need to wait until the balancing pipe has balanced the water level in the other tank, before you can put more in. I'll just give the engine a bit of a clean. Steam engines are really oily, dirty and horrible. They're not too dirty running on gas, but they soon get covered in a mixture of ash, soot and steam oil, as you will see when I do the coal-fired test. While I'm showing this gratuitous shot of the water level in the boiler, I'd just like to mention that it's a really good idea to clean down a miniature steam locomotive after a coal-fired run, very, very carefully, whilst it's still hot. As usual, while I'm waiting for the steam to appear in the pressure gauge, I'm lubricating all the moving parts, particularly the axle boxes. You get to these through the spokes and put quite a generous amount of oil on top of the axle box. Now I've got a small amount of steam pressure in the boiler, I've opened the blower valve slightly, that's the one on the right. And I've also opened the regulator. There isn't enough steam pressure to turn the wheels, but by opening the cylinder drains, the steam passing through the cylinders will warm them up. Here is a known good injector to fit if the other one doesn't work. Very slowly, because this gas burner is not exactly a coal fire, the pressure starts to climb. When it got to about 40 pounds per square inch, I thought it was a good time to test the injector. First of all, I'm feeling at the water temperature and it's cool. You always need to open the water valve first and let it run on most injectors just to cool down the body of the injector before you open the steam valve and that's what I'm doing at the moment but there's not much injection going on. Working with model steam locomotives does take considerable patience. Here I've removed the injector and fitted one that I definitely know works and here I'm testing it and guess what? It doesn't work. To allow time for the paint to subside from touching the live steam pipes with my fingers, I thought it would run the engine for a while. Notice that only steam now is coming out of the cylinder drains and the engine is running very smoothly. 
Back to the injector problem. I do know that I have a successful live steam feed to the injector because the pipe burnt my fingers on several occasions. And here I'm using my water reservoir tank to check that there isn't a leak on the actual valve from the water tank on the engine. And as is very evident from this clip, it's still not working and there aren't any air leaks on my reservoir tank so I know what the problem definitely is. It's that check valve, it's sticking again. I don't think this is actually a physical problem with the valve. Either boiler impurities or maybe some Loctite 542 is stopping the ball from moving inside. Here's something worth mentioning. It doesn't really apply when you're running the locomotive on a track because with this amount of steam pressure, which is very low, the engine wouldn't even run. But sat on a test bed, you can run the engine at a very low pressure, but it's not a good idea because quite a lot of very wet steam is rushing into the cylinders and now everything in the vicinity of the engine is covered in a mixture of steam oil and water which I need to clean off before I can use my workbench again. It's time to stop playing with the engine and blow down the boiler. I've connected a long piece of silicone rubber tubing to the outlet of the blowdown valve and this goes down into the water bottle on the floor. Please note that I will not be reusing this water. I'll pour it away and refill the water bottle with some new clean stuff. The whole point of blowing down a boiler is to get rid of any impurities, silt, sediment or whatever there is inside the boiler, so I certainly don't want to put it back into the boiler the next time I run the engine. That's it for this episode. I'm fairly confident that I know what's wrong with the injector and it's definitely not the injector. I will sort out the sticky check valve before I run the engine again. As I mentioned before, you do need an extraordinary amount of patience when you play with these miniature steam locomotives. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.